open it up. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Harris. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator at the Northern Michigan Alliance for Children. Thank you for being here with us for part eight of the trauma webinar series hosted by the Trauma Awareness Steering Committee of Clare County. We appreciate those of you with us today and thank everyone who joined us last week. If you didn't know, TASC is a multidisciplinary team made up of agencies who serve Clare County and are committed to continuing to spread awareness to build a resilient, trauma-informed community. Our goal is that all community members have the tools and knowledge they need to ensure that Clare County is a safe place to live, learn, and flourish. Reminders for our webinar today. Our webinar is being recorded and shared on Facebook Live for future viewing. The presentation will be approximately 30 minutes followed by a Q&A session. All participants are muted, so please post any questions or comments you have in the chat box. You can have your camera on or off, whichever you are more comfortable with. Today, we are excited to have Sarah McCurdy with us for her presentation on sensory crafts. Sarah has been employed by the Claire Gladwin RESD for the last three years, working with families and getting their voices heard in the community along with teaching a parenting series called Making Parenting a Pleasure. She has a seven-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter, and they love crafting together. She has found some fun sensory crafts that she would love to share with you virtually. Thank you for being here with us today, Sarah. I'll hand it over to you. Hi, everyone. I want to thank you for joining uh, uh, me and everyone on this Thursday. So we are going to talk about sensory crafts, sensory activities today. Um, but a couple of things I want to start with is like what exactly is sensory play? And then also why is it so important? <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna talk about is like what, ooh, I'm sorry, um, what is sensory play? So sensory play includes any activity that stimulates a young child um, or any child's senses of touch, smell, taste, sight, hearing, as well as anything which engages movement and balance. So sometimes when we think about sensory, um, I used to think of it as just being the touching, the smelling, the taste, but it really includes movement and balance too. And then sensory activities should facilitate exploration. Um, it's gonna help their brain to create stronger connections to process and respond to sensory information. Use of sensory play can assist the child in touching, smelling, and playing with a texture in an environment with little expectation. So when we think about this, we think about maybe giving our child a new food and they automatically say, oh, I don't like that. Like, and it's usually a texture thing. So letting them play with those different textures and getting used to them before just expecting them to dig in and eat whatever you've made for dinner. Um, and then of course, sensory play is gonna be messy. Um, so this is really hard for some parents if you like like to control the messes. A lot of our sensory um, activities or crafts can be very messy and we just kind of have to move over that because our kids are learning during this time. And I will admit that I am one of those parents that really can't handle mess. But over the last three years of really digging into this, I um, have learned to just go with it and go with the flow. My kids are learning, they're having fun, so why not? Um, and then of course, just make it engaging fun and it can be super easy. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. I am gonna give you some ideas that maybe will cost a little bit more and some that you can just use with stuff you have around your house. <laughs> so why, like why is sensory play important? Um, first of all, we wanna remember that engaging your children in sense of sensory play is gonna help them for life ahead of them. So the top five reasons for sensory play is it builds that nerve connections in the brain pathways. It's gonna support their language development, cognitive growth, fine and gross motor skills, supports problem solving skills and social interaction, aids in developing and enhancing memory. And then of course, number one, it's great for calming an anxious or frustrated child. So a lot of times if we 
um, ourself or our children have sensory um, disorders, really getting them into these crafts and activities is great for just calming their anxiety. Um, and my kids have actually turned eight and six now, just recently. And um, my son suffers from anxiety. I've passed it on to him, I like to say. Um, but these activities are amazing for him. So you may hear me mention him more than my daughter. So I've kind of split it up um, into ages. And so we start small. And you can start doing sensory activities with infants. Um, as you can see from my pictures here, there's tons of different things you can do. One is offering different textures. So they make these balls that you can buy. Um, they're like pokey or they're rough, they're smooth. And so just giving those for your baby to explore. The next is looking in a mirror. So they make different kinds of mirrors. This is great for tummy time. Um, we're constantly talking with um, parents about getting tummy time for their infants. So putting a mirror on the floor, they make the baby proof ones and making faces in the mirror, showing them that you're making faces, things like that. Another really fun activity is tummy time painting. So that's my picture over here in the corner. Um, all you have to do with this, super simple. Take a bigger Ziploc bag, throw a piece of paper in there, throw some paint in there, tape it or um, close it shut, tape it onto the floor. Um, this is great for tummy time or put them in their height chair, tape it to the height chair and they can just press down on the bag and the paint goes everywhere. And then you have a really cool project to hang up that your infant just did, which is really cool. And then tunnel play. So you can buy the cool tunnels that your kids can crawl through, um, but really you can just take a big box. So maybe you've gotten a new um, refrigerator or even a smaller box from Amazon. And what's really cool is you can add things to it. So I talked about textures a little bit um, at the first of this slide. And so hanging ribbons that have different textures from them, gluing those to the box, doing different heights. So the kids can crawl in there. Um, this little box had a carpet piece in there, which was pretty cool because that was a different texture. A lot of infants, when they start to crawl, they'll like freeze um, on grass or on carpet because of the feel of it on their little legs. So this is really cool to go ahead and throw like a carpet square into that box and let them just explore going in and out. And they're feeling those different textures and it's getting all of their senses um, going. Next, I have a bigger age gap. I have one to three. Um, and moving on, all of these activities can be done with the older kids too, but I kind of did split it up into age groups. So blowing bubbles, bubbles are amazing um, for this age because they like to run around, they can try to catch them. You know, they're slimy, um, they're, they're just really fun to play with. <clears throat> and then finger painting. Um, so again, at this age, they're putting everything in their mouth. So sometimes you don't want to use regular paint or like shaving cream, things like that, because they might um, put it in their mouth. So you can use food, like yogurt, applesauce, and pudding are amazing um, sensory things that you can use to paint with. Stick them in their high chair or in their booster seat, um, put a paper on, give them some yogurt, some pudding, let them make a mess. It's a lot of fun. And then I call it family rock band. That's what we call it in our house, even though my kids are older. Um, so when they were younger, I remember them wanting to get in the cupboards and pull out all the pans when you're trying to cook and you're like, stop, like I'm just trying to cook dinner. So make it fun. Um, have them pull out some bowls, some pots, pans, um, spoons. And what we like to do is make up silly songs. So we've just started a talking is teaching initiative in Claire and Gladwin counties, which is just talking, singing, reading through everything you do all day long. So this is a perfect time. You're in the kitchen and you give them some bowls and spoons, you make up silly songs while they bang along and have fun. And they get to hear like, if I bang this spoon on this pan, it makes this noise, where if I bang it on a bowl, it maybe makes a, a louder noise. Um, so that's really fun to do. And then sensory bags are really cool. Um, we do a virtual play group. And most recently we did sensory bags with our virtual play group um, kids. And all it was was a Ziploc bag. And we put shaving cream in because we were talking about snowman for the month. So shaving cream, super easy, um, super inexpensive. We put some of that in a bag. We threw some googly eyes in. We threw a little um, nose in. And then all the kids had to do was squish the bag and make, the, um, make it into a snowman. So make sure the eyes go to the top. And they really, really liked that. 
So that's something fun that you can do. And with a sensory bag, you can throw anything in. You could throw some water in it with the, some confetti, or you could throw um, some oil in there with some glitter and like different things like that. It's just really fun. These are really cool in the picture. They threw some water in there with pom-poms and then taped it all around onto the table. So next I have four to eight. Um, and this is, I, I only go to eight, but of course all of this stuff could be used for later on in life. Um, what we do is I mainly deal with kids from birth to eight. So I kind of stopped at age eight, but shaving cream is super fun. And something learned we new we've learned is that if you take the foam blocks and you put shaving cream on them, they stick together. Um, and my kids learned this. And they found a, this picture, which was cool because this is a real thing that pe teachers do um, in their, their classrooms. So we have fun. We do it with Legos and just put the blocks together and see how far we can build. So shaving cream is really fun, easy to clean up. It makes your table smell really good too. Um, finger painting, of course, is awesome for those sensory, um, getting those senses going. And then nature play and walk. At this time, like getting outside and just letting your kids explore, dig in the dirt, um, get dirty, have fun. And like I said, I'm that parent that at first was like, don't get dirty, don't dig in the dirt. Um, that's my kids will spend hours digging in the dirt. They absolutely love it. And we listen. So if they're digging in the dirt, I'm like, listen for the birds or listen, what do you hear? Um, and it, again, it's all about senses. And then slime and putty is really good. Sometimes we don't like to get that slime out because it sticks to everything or they might get it in their hair. We've had that happen. Um, my son, he loves to play with slime. Like I said, he's a little anxious. Um, so that's his go-to. Well, he put it in his hair and had to get it all cut off at the top. So we learn, you roll with it, it happens. And then sensory bottles, which I'm gonna go into in a little bit on how to make those. And then second, or the last thing on here is dance around with scarves and musical instruments. Just like I said, have a family band night. Um, my kids absolutely love to do this. So one of the things I've seen come out um, a lot lately, lately are these sensory boards. And actually um, both of these kids are on here are the grand um, children of people in my office. And my boss, Kendra, makes these sensory boards. But you can make them as big and as little as you want. These are pretty intense boards that she's made. Um, but they're best for infants to toddlers. And the reason is because it gives them everything they need in one place. Um, so they can explore all of their senses in one place. And you're going to find that they're going to stick with it and like play with it for a really long time. And then of course, there's tons of developmental benefits. The one being that it, it gets all of their senses going. So you can add things like a mirror, um, a pipe, and they throw the balls. You can see over here in the picture of her standing She's putting a ball and it goes into the bucket. Um, she put zippers on there. She put a light that they can push and see on, off. Um, she put a lock on there. There's tons of different stuff um, over it. You can't see in the picture, but she did a picture of um, grandpa and grandma. And then they open the door and they can see grandma and grandpa. And it's really fun um, for the infants and toddlers to have this board. So this is something you can definitely create. And like I said, you can go as big or as small as you want. So then sensory bottles, also known a lot as calm down bottles is what I call them. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to do this. All you have to do is take a water bottle. I've already put water in here. It is better if it's warm water, but I fill it about halfway up and the, you can take these off um, so that you can see through it. These water bottles are really flimsy. Um, Pop bottles can be way better because they're just thicker, um, so 20 ounce. And then we just use regular vegetable oil. Um, you can use baby oil. Um, you can use corn syrup. It could be a little more expensive, um, but we just do oil and water, and then you just pour the, the rest of the way up with oil. Trying not to get it all over the computer. <laughs> And then you can add like whatever you want. So they can choose colors. They can do um, food coloring in it. So like I said, super simple water, some oil. I'm going to go with red. So a couple drops of food coloring. 
We like glitter in our house because who doesn't like some sparkle, even though it goes with you wherever you go. So throwing some glitter in. And then of course, throw your lid on. So you're gonna know your child enough. They're gonna like take the lid off. You can always use hot glue around the lid. You can also just tape it. Oh, my kids are a little bit older. So shake it up. I okay, glitter all over my computer already. And then you can just watch the glitter go down. So I actually have one of these on my desk that I use even as an adult. Um, if I'm starting to feel a little bit anxious or like um, right before doing this and going live, I was like, oh, I'm getting a little nervous. So I just have mine and I shake it up and I just watch the glitter fall. You can use glitter glue. You can use like clear glue too. Um, I added a little too much food coloring so you can't see the glitter as much, but um, it's just really fun and you can fill it all the way up. So these are really simple to use and like I have the directions on here too. But like I said, you can use baby oil, vegetable oil, corn syrup. There's a ton of different um, recipes out there on how to make them, but we're super simple here. Water, oil, some food coloring and glitter if you want. You can also put confetti in here. So you have bigger items that you can watch fall. Um, and what we use this for in our house is we use these before we react in a negative way. So my kids, um, cause I've been doing this with them for about two years now, we have it right on the TV stand. And my son knows that before he overreacts to his sister doing something, he'll grab the water bottle, he'll shake it. And then he'll like watch the glitter fall for maybe two, three minutes. And then he'll go back and deal with whatever his sister's done. Um, cause we've taught our kids to start to handle their own problems and not always be that tattletale person. And so it's really cool to watch him. Um, or he'll tell me sometimes if I react to him, he'll say, you should probably grab the glitter bottle and relax yourself. Thanks Ryland, I probably should. <laughs> so then something else I wanted to show you that's really easy to have in your house are sensory bins. So these are hands-on tools for children ex to explore their world um, through senses. And you can do so many things in a sensory bin. They're gonna discover um, and they're gonna learn while engaging all of their senses. So again, these can be made as big or as small as you want. I remember when I taught preschool, you know, we always had the sand table or the rice table or the water table, but you can do these at home. So all this is is a um, super, like just a regular bin, has a lid to it. Um, and we've had one of these in our house since my daughter was, I want to say two, um, and she's six now. And she actually has beans in hers. And it's funny because she will play with things for maybe five or 10 minutes and she's done playing. She will sit and play with her sensory bin for 20, 30 minutes. It's insane how long she'll play with this. So one, thing's par one thing parents have noticed is that with sensory items, their kids play longer with them because it's just engaging all of those senses um, and keeping them busy. So again, these are super simple. You can use as big or small of a bucket as you want, but hers has beans in it, so dried beans. Um, and here's a, a list I'll go over in a minute, but you can do compounds. You can do big, small, so these are all one size, but you throw these in. We throw in tweezers, because I talked about doing fine motor skills. So these are great. These are smaller tweezers. So I would use these for my older kids. Um, but you can buy the bigger ones um, at like the dollar store and everything that you possibly could want for a sensory bin is at the dollar store. So that's even more exciting because you don't have to spend a ton of money. So they can pick up the pom poms. Um, you can turn it into a learning experience too. So you can say, hey, um, I would say to Ava, cause she's working on colors. I want you to grab all the green pom-poms out of the bin and she would pull them out and then we would count them together. Um, she's working on patterns too. So let's pull out the green and she would pull out her tweezers. Um, she just likes to play in them. I mean, they're fun to touch, <laughs> fun to squeeze. So that's something cool that you can throw in your sensory bin. The other fun thing that we do during the fall and if you've ever been, uh, we used to have a fall event. Um, we've done this before, before COVID when you were allowed to have kids touch the same thing over and over. 
at the dollar store, we picked up these really cool leaves. Um, they're like fabric, but the cool thing is they're all different um, textures. So again, I've talked about textures and how that's great for sensory. Um, so some of them are smooth, some of them are rough, some um, are bigger, some are small. So we throw these in our sensory bin in the fall where we throw in real leaves too. And then we throw um, insects in or like frogs and they have to dig for them. So that's really fun to do. Um, just touching them. They like to throw them up and watch them fall. Which leaves gonna fall the biggest or you know the smallest. So again, all learning activities. And then of course you can throw things in there like rice, sand, oatmeal, ice is really cool. So there's a project where you fill your ice cube trays with little like um, animals. Like you could fill it with this little little guy, fill it with water and then take them out of the ice cube tray, put them in your sensory bin and the kids have to try to melt the ice to get the, the animal out of the ice cube. Um, cooked noodles is really fun to play with, um, especially like spaghetti. Um, dried, dried noodles are the same, you can throw those in there. Water beads, I find those to be a little more expensive. So we, we don't have those in our house, but you can definitely use water beads. Um, and then pom-poms, beans, um, snow is fun. Something you can do with the noodles and the rice too, is you can use food coloring. So I get my kids to help me. So we cook the noodles, we throw them in a plastic bag. They throw some food coloring in, they squish it around. So one, they have a sensory bag right there, or once they dry and they're all color, you can throw them in the sensory bin and then they have it just to dig through and play with. So two for one. We did that with rice too, um, back when I taught preschool and we would color, have the kids color the rice so they each got their own bag and then we'd throw it into our big sensory bin and they would play with it that way. And you can see we've, they've thrown sand toys in here and dinosaurs, um, measuring cups, measuring spoons are perfect to throw in your sensory bin. And like I said, with ours, there's dried beans in it at all times. We just throw the lid on she has her spoons and everything in there. And then when she knows she wants to have her sensory bin, maybe she needs to relax herself or self-regulate, she pulls it out and she just plays with it. So I wanted to kind of bring in calm down buckets too, because sensory is really good for like self-regulating. So there's also um, a thing called a calm down bucket or a calm down bag. And mine is in a bag. Um, so everyone these days gets these like grocery sacks that are, you know, you have a million of them. So these are really cool to make. So one thing is, a couple of things to remember is what works best for one child may not work for another. So you can't maybe put the same things in both bags for your children. Um, so try out different items, see what works. Items should all be based on age. Um, and then, of course, teach your child how to use the items. So if you're going to start a calm down bucket or bag, making sure you tell your child, like, this is what we use it for, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. And this is how you use the items. Make sure they have a safe place for them to use these materials in. The bucket or bag needs to be in reach. However, if you have smaller children, I start this super young, but I don't have it in reach. Um, so I, I say to them about two um, I see you're feeling frustrated. You might need to use your calm down bucket and I get it down for them. And then they can go ahead and use the items in there. And then you're gonna wanna change out the items if needed because kids get bored with the same things. So here's a bunch of stuff you can put in, which I'll go over in a minute, but this is what we have in ours. So my kids are six and eight and they actually have one of these in their bedroom um in their safe place so they have a spot in their bedroom that has some pillows some stuffed animals um, my son has a weighted blanket and so he knows if he's feeling frustrated or angry um instead of reacting to whatever's happening he will go in his room in his safe spot um it's not a timeout we do not use it as a timeout spot um but he knows to go in there he'll grab his bag and sometimes i'll walk in and be like oh he needs to relax himself and so he's in there doing it by himself. I don't bug him. His sister knows not to go in there. 
but he has stuff like uh, pinwheel. So this is great um, to blow. Mine's not spinning because it's been in my bag forever, but all, just watching it spin in all the colors. Of course, we all know about stress balls, um, but these are foam balls. So I recommend these for the younger ages because they're a little easier to squeeze um, where stress balls can be really hard sometimes. So for the little fingers, these are just little foam balls. Um, you can buy things like these little sensory toys. So they have to put this together. You can do bigger stuffed animals or even just small ones. So the reason we have the, all these items is if um, in our Make Parenting a Pleasure series, which I'm gonna talk about quickly at the end, I give you everything to make a calm down bucket. And so we just bought little stuffed animals, but kids can hold this, they can rub it on their face, they can pet it. It just really calms them down. I don't know exactly what these are called, but it has the little ball in it and I hate them because I can never get it where I need it to go. <laughs> but kids seem to love these and we'll play with them for hours. And so we put these super cheap. I think it was like 25 cents um a dollar for like 12 of them um but they can move it around watch it go um and it seems to really we throw books into our calm down bucket we like mr grumpy pants about a penguin um and it talks about feelings because in my house we talk about feelings all the time just because that's what i teach on too and again it goes on ages so this is really cool that i just picked up it's a make your own comic book and so you create your own character. And um, so every time my son needs to go to his calm down space, he can just do a new page for his comic book. So I have crayons and um, pencils in there and he knows to do one page and then he'll come out and he's fine with that. And the next day, maybe he needs to go back in there and he'll do the next page. Or maybe it's a couple of days before he has to use his calm down bag. And so he hasn't, you know, quite finished his book yet, which is amazing. I can't wait to see it till the end. And then, of course, just having notepads. Uh, maybe they need to write a note to themselves or write a note to somebody. So having notepads with um, pencils or pens in there. And then, of course, fidget toys. We all remember back when fidget spinners were like this huge thing and everyone wanted one. Um, this is just a rubber thing. <laughs> you can keep in your hands. I actually have one of these at all times when I'm talking on Zoom because um, I get nervous and it helps me fidget. Um, and then my son has one of these too that he has for school. Um, and if he's just feeling anxious, he just pulls it out, doesn't make a distraction or anything, just has it in his hands quietly. He knows um, he is homeschooled right now. So it is a little bit different than being with a bunch of different kids. Um, and maybe it, it comes, it becomes a distract, distraction, but these are really nice to have in there too. Some other things you can have based on the age of your child is bubbles. Um, you can put your calm down bottle right in your bag or your bucket. Like I said, ours sits on our TV stand um, so that it's easy to access. You could have Play-Doh. Um, kids may need headphones that are noise canceling. So if there's a lot going on, Slime or Silly Putty, fidget toys. I Spy books are really good, or you can buy cards that are I Spy cards. Stuffed animals, pinwheels. Um, they make the little like back massagers. Those are really good for kids to like use on their arm when they need to relax. Um, coloring book and crayons. Word searches are great for older kids. So if you have teens, these calm down buckets can work wonders with them. Um, and word searches seem to really bring that down a notepad and pencil, stress balls, sand timers. So again, I talked about we don't use the calm down bucket or the calm down space for timeouts. So the timer is not for like, this is how long you sit in your area. But really we bought them and just watching the sand fall down is super calming. Like it's crazy just to watch that sand fall. Um, so that's one of my son's favorite in his calm down bucket. And then you could throw in some yoga cards and then just any kind of books. And again, it can be a small, you don't have to throw a ton of items in. Our bag usually has four or five items at all times. And I do switch it out. Um, for my younger daughter, I do let her know, like there's something new in your bag. Um, and I show her how to use it. If it's something I don't think she'll know how to use. Um, my son though, he'll normally just get in 
and find that there's something new and then he's super excited about it. So I just wanted to talk about two things I have coming up. Um, I do teach, as Jason had mentioned when he was introducing me, a Make Parenting a Pleasure series. Um, I've been doing this for about three years now. And we just started doing it on Zoom a year ago and it seems to be doing really well. So we're gonna hold it on Zoom again, starting April 8th. And like I had mentioned, um, if you sign up for this series, we do give you a bag of things to put in your calm down bucket for your kids, um, along with getting all the other materials needed for, for the series. So you get it dropped off right on your porch, all eight weeks worth of stuff. And we meet every Thursday from seven to 8.30 doesn't normally go till 8.30, but we like to give it that option in case we have really good conversation going. Um, and so I just ended one. I had four people complete all eight, um, all eight weeks, which is amazing. And I'm excited about this next one coming up April 8th. So if that's something you're interested in, you can contact me. My information will be at the end of the slides. And this is free for Claire and Gladwin County families. If you are out of district, you can go ahead and contact me and we can figure out um, how to get you those materials and all of that. The other thing I wanna talk about is our cooking connections. Um, cooking is great for all of our senses and sensory activities. And so we are starting in April, a three month cooking connections and it will run April 20th, May 19th and June 15th. And at 7 PM, we'll go live and create a crock pot meal together where you'll just be able to throw it in the crock, um, throw it in the base the next day and have your meal ready. Um, there's tons of benefits for cooking with our children. It increases their language development. It really gets all of their senses going because they're smelling things, they're looking at things, they're touching things. It's gonna enhance those fine motor skills. It increases their math skills and it promotes healthy eating. And number one, the most important benefit is it encourages family bonding, which we're all about in my department. And so you will get your crock pot and all of your utensils. So measuring cups, a cookbook, um, tons of different stuff. I haven't even got it all in yet. I'm super excited. All of that will be dropped off on your porch. And then the, the day of the event, you'll get all the food dropped off to your porch. So it will cook, um, it will serve a family of six probably a little bit more depending on portion sizes um, that your family eats, but I will go live with my kids and we'll be cooking the meal with you and your kids and teaching them like how to cook and just how to turn it into a learning experience. So registration is now open for that if you're interested in um, that program. So again, my information is on here. If you have any questions, you can um, call me on that number or go ahead and email me. I also do run the Clare County Parent Coalition Facebook page. So if you're on that, you can always message me on there. You can find our flyers on there, anything like that. Um, I highly suggest checking out that page as we put out different activities and videos um, each week. But was there any questions? And I don't know how you guys are running the question and answer. Actually, um, if it's okay with you, we'll do our survey real quick and then yep. go into a Q&A. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sarah, for being here and giving us some of your time and also sharing all that helpful information. Um, I just opened up the survey poll. If you could fill that out for us, we really value your feedback. Just leave it open for a minute and then we will go into our Q&A. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat box. Okay, we have no questions yet. We welcome any questions you might have. Uh, we have a comment, great job, thank you very much. Thank you. So many great ideas, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, somebody put, I love the idea of paint in the bay. Such a fun idea. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then you have, um, we hang everything on our refrigerator. So of course, then you have something cool that your um, infant has created that you can keep. Sarah, I do have a question. Um, if, will you be expanding into the Midland area or do you have somebody that does what you do uh, similarly in the Midland area? Um, so Amanda Hawkins is actually the parent liaison in Midland County and I'm pretty close with her. We've been um, doing some stuff together. They don't currently have a Make Parenting a Pleasure series, um, but they do have um, some different programs they do put on. One of them is Parent Cafe that we work together on. So it's um, just one night a month, we come together as parents and like talk about um, a topic and just discuss like what's going on. So that is available. Um, I have had someone take the Make Parenting a Pleasure series from Midland. Um, I live in Shepherd, so they actually met me on M20 and picked up their bag of supplies. So that is always an option if, if you need it. But I would definitely look into a parent, um, the parent liaison in Midland County to see what they have available. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you again, Sarah. Thank you all for joining us today. You can find the recording of today's webinar and other webinars along with updates and reminders on our Task Clare County Facebook page. Please join us next week, Thursday at noon for the final part in our webinar series, Simple Steps to Stack the Odds in Our Favor, Building Resilience with Sarah Sro. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you, everyone.